For anybody that's new to this space, I'm Victoria Washington. I'm the CEO of the House of Wealth Embodiment. I'm also a creative director. And so today we're gonna to be talking about a really special opportunity that I have for you. And if you're new here, you're gonna be able to see how I think about brand and the energetics behind branding and the direction that I see our industry going. So oftentimes I'll come on here and share projections of what I'm noticing in our space and then I create micro opportunities for us to actually do something about it. So if you're new, you're gonna be very, very inspired, you're gonna be very invigorated, and you're gonna walk away with a fresh perspective of what your brand can actually offer to the space. And then if you've been here for a while, I'd love for you to let me know because you likely already know what we're about to dive into, and you have an idea of where we go on these lives. So. If you're a note taker, this would be an amazing live to take notes for. You'll definitely want to write some things down. And also, if you're just with me in your um, headphones and you're just walking, this is an amazing space to just receive and to let the transmission move through your body and invite you into a new way and a new perspective. So what I've been noticing in our space is the habit and the habitual pattern of replication and Oh, Miriam, I love that so much. Thank you. And I've been taking a step back and being deep in my own process. And I've shared some of my philosophies around consistency and what Instagram is doing and the different changes that we're seeing. I've been, I've been sharing my perspective of what it means to take time away from social media and how to still have a brand that speaks even when you are not physically here. Because at the end of the day, that's really the freedom that I believe that we are all seeking and that we really want to feel in our business is if I need to rest or take a step back or go in my own channel and have my own experience, I want to feel like my business can still exist outside of me and can outlive me. So drop an emoji if you felt that in your company or in your business before. I'd love to see what entrepreneurs are here because this is definitely gonna be an entrepreneurial driven conversation. And I have a couple notes here to keep us on track because I'd like to break things down by definition and unpack the different words that we see in our industry because I believe that they hold really important information for us to redefine how we wanna use that in our company. So let's first look at the word innovation and why this live is called the age of innovation. I believe right now that we as entrepreneurs are in the age of innovation. Anytime the economy or anytime we start to see new things beginning to be projected onto us, like the economy is changing, this is what you have to watch out for, this is what you have to, to go for, that is a sign that innovation is in the room that it is time for pioneership, it is time for us to blaze a new trail, it is time for us to increase our mental fortitude, to feel into what we want to add to the scenario. And in our industry, what we will see, we're at a very interesting turning point, I've noticed. We're at an interesting turning point of one or two things could happen. Number one, we will see a few names make it, quote unquote, make it in our industry bubble. And then everyone will match or replicate their offers, their business model to that because they think that that's the model to be successful. Or we'll see a new wave of entrepreneurs boldly blaze a new trail and decide a new way and a more creative way to bring their offers to the room and to bring their value to the marketplace. That's literally the crossroads that we're at right now. And many of you can likely feel it in the space. And when we're at that crossroads, there's a couple different things that happen in our body. We can feel fear. We can feel excitement. We can feel pain. We can feel grieving because things are changing. And you have these ideas on your heart and you want so bad to get them out and it's like, what's the way to get them out so that the people can feel them? What's the way to bring them through so that people will sign up or so that people can understand the value? And when we're in that, that need and that, that grip of I have to find the way, we're more susceptible to, oh, well, that worked for that person. And so I'll just take it on as my own. Or we're more susceptible to marketing that will have us believe that we're wrong, and if we buy from this person, then we'll be right. And then we take on what that person did, 
and we add it to our thing and all of a sudden we've lost the soul of our business. And I speak to this because it almost happened to me and I caught it and I'm really grateful that I caught it. The soul of your business is everything. If the soul of your business dies, then you are walking around teaching somebody else's songs. You're walking around speaking somebody else's tune and you may not even realize it, especially if it's bringing you even a sliver of success. So we are entering into the age of innovation and it's a really exciting time, but it's also a time where, where we can be afraid. We can be fearful because there's a lot of unknown in the age of innovation. But what I've discovered over the years of continuously riding the edge of innovation and doing things differently, even though I wasn't seeing others doing it, is that fear doesn't always mean that something's wrong. Oftentimes, fear is evidence that there's something in the room to be really courageous for. And as I was taking some time away and I was in my own space, and by the way, that was a breakthrough for someone because we're so quick to over-spiritualize our fear or try to rewrite it, but oftentimes I'm moving very afraid. I'm, I went on this live afraid. I went on stage fearful. I walked into rooms fearful. I don't try to get rid of my fear. It's usually an indication that there's something worth me being really courageous for, worth me innovating for, worth me taking myself out of my comfort zone for. So if I try to rewrite it, then I often take myself back to what once was, where I wasn't afraid. But if you're innovating, you're going to be scared. If you're innovating and you're playing that game, you're going to be questioning yourself. You're going to be truly wondering, is this the right move? Is this what I should be doing? Because it feels like you're going against the grain. You're going against what everybody else is doing. But when you're connected to God and you're connected to the mission and the, the holiness behind that courage, you know that there's something so much deeper providing you with the strength and moving you. And one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in the last 60 days of really putting this into motion is God doesn't always prepare you. Sometimes God just moves you. Most of the time, God just places you and asks you, will you trust me? Will you go? Will you take this idea and do it in this way? Will you teach that thing in this specific way? Will you trust me to move even though I haven't given you all the steps yet, even though I haven't given you all the pieces, because innovation happens as you go. It happens as you collect feedback on the different steps that you're taking. So if you're innovating, you're often gonna be moving with fear. And that's why I believe the innovators and the pioneers are truly the most successful entrepreneurs because they're seeing something beyond the veal. They're unplugged from the slave templates of this industry. There are slave templates that are getting disrupted right now in this industry. And we have to unplug from them even if they've made us money, even if they look really shiny, even if it looks like it's something that we need. If it compromises the soul of your business, it is never, ever, ever worth it. So let's look at the definition of innovation. Innovation by definition means to make changes in something established. So when something's established, it has roots. This industry is established. It's been around for a while. We're still young and it's still, it's still new, but let's be real. There's some established patterns in this space. There's some established patterns in our marketing tactics. There's still established patterns in our content creation. There's established patterns in the way that people sell. So to innovate is to quite literally make change to that establishment, to disrupt it or move it into something else. Specifically, when it comes to introducing new methods, new ideas, and new offers, that's innovation. The second definition of innovation is when a you introduce something new to the marketplace, specifically a product, specifically a service, when you're introducing it to the marketplace. So you can see right now as I define innovation, this is really important for a company's success. If your company is not innovating, it's likely plateauing. 
It's likely just going along with what it knows. And if your human soul does that, what happens in your life? What happens in your life if you're not innovating, you're not evolving? The soul in you is just going along. Well, your business is the exact same way. And your business will often mirror back to you where in your real life you are also doing that. So the age of innovation is calling us all forward into how are we going to make changes to the establishment and notice what's not working and notice what we want to see happen in the space. And are we either going to wait for someone else to do that or are we going to be brave enough to innovate our own path towards that? Specifically through our products, specifically through our offers, through our methodology, through our teaching. So this takes so much more than flow state. This takes mental fortitude. You think of the Steve Jobs of the world, some of the most innovative companies in the world, their minds are working. So this is not just a, I'm gonna lean back and let the download come in, that's not innovation. Innovation is truly stretching your mind to think outside of what you don't know you don't know about our industry, about what it means to run a business, about what it means to be a leader, about what it means to bring value to the space. And the reason why I'm so passionate about this is because innovation has allowed me to create a legacy. Innovation has allowed me to take rest when I need to take rest. Innovation has allowed me to create new paths and to truly build a business that is in sync with the rhythm of my soul. The second piece to this and the, the connection to our industry is through your offers. So the word offer gets thrown around a lot in our space and I want to define that as well because it's really going to be supportive for you to see what it is you're actually doing when you're selling. And we can be so in it. We can be so in the social media, so in the Instagram, so in the launch, so in the emails that we forget what we're actually doing is we're offering, we're making offers. So here's the definition of offer. The definition of offer in the most simple form is to present something. And when you're innovating an offer, you're presenting something new. So that's how those two connect. So we'll see offers that are just being presented and some of them will look like, I said, the, the top, it'll be a replication of the top and they're just presenting something that is the same but through their business. And then we're gonna see a new wave of entrepreneurs that are offering and putting and presenting innovative offers into the space, ones that are new, that, that disrupt, that bring forth change in the establishment. These are the most risky to sell because you have to believe in them more. It's not hard to sell a regurgitated version of someone else's offer. It's not hard to sell something that's already worked for someone else because you've borrowed their belief and you've plugged into the belief that they have in that thing and then you've jumped on it and you've used that belief to sell it. But it takes a deeper bone deep faith in what it is that you're saying, what it is that you're selling, what it is that you're offering, when you've innovated it, that's just you. You and God fully behind it, being like, I believe in this with every bone in my body and I've got to believe in it because it came through me. The second definition of offer that is going to be supportive for you is it's an expression of readiness to do or give something if desired. I'm going to read that again so it lands. The definition of offer is an expression of readiness to do or give something if desired. So the thing with an offer is it can be either rejected or it can be accepted by the person if desired. So why is it more scary to actually innovate offers? It's because we could hear no. And then, but when we hear yes, and it's with the person who truly desires it, the soul of our business explodes and we start to actually work with people and we actually do the missionary work with that person that's going to move our legacy forward and we trust that that's going to happen 
We trust with every bone in our body that that's going to happen and we use the power of our minds to create and circulate and steward wealth into the planet. This is why when we're selling, we're doing so much more than just talking about a thing to make money. When we're selling, we're making offers, we're presenting and innovating new things to the space. And you might think that this is such a simple concept, but it's not, and here's why. Most people right now are in the, the habit and the pattern of turning everything into a teaching moment. And coaches, I want you to listen up specifically not everything is a teaching moment. Some things are just for you. Not everything is a course or an offer. Not everything is a masterclass. Not everything is a training. Some things are just for you and that's it. And when you actually give yourself bold permission to experience it without documenting it for something else, you actually become it and you don't need to teach it. You are it. People feel it. It becomes an integrated part of your brand. So what I'm excited to teach you is how to discern between two different things. What's an actual offer that's going to bring value to the marketplace and that can be transmuted into a micro brand, a branch of your business that then gives birth to a model that honors the soul of your company. And what is simply a teaching that God sat you down to learn? Where are you trying to monetize over truly being in union with your life? Where are you over spiritualizing everything? Where are you trying to make everything mean something for your business? Where are you over giving to the point where you're not actually giving value? Right now with where social media is going, we need real value in the room. It's not gonna be a time of just putting things out to put things out. We have to actually know what is a valuable asset for the marketplace and how can I build a business model that truly, truly, truly actually reflects me and what it is that I wanna teach or coach on. Where are we just taking these quick lessons, these quick downloads and just putting them into offers and then we're pushing those out, but we can feel the lack of stability in that. We can feel the, the unsteadiness in that, the lack of integrity in that, the lack of depth in that. But that's what some people are teaching. That's what some people are saying do. That's what some people are modeling. But innovators don't need models. They're in the method of their own genius. They don't use models to create. They use the method of their genius to express and present new things to the space. So as we're looking at this, there's two different things. I want to give you an analogy. In your life, you're going to take two different rides. You're going to take a private jet sometimes to your lessons, to your blessings, to your journey. And when God puts you on a private jet, God doesn't track the flight. And nobody's going to know where you are. They're not going to know where you went to. If you've watched Keep Breathing on Netflix, give me a yes in the comments because this is what inspired this analogy. Sometimes God's going to put you on a private jet and the, the flight's not going to be tracked. And nobody's going to know where you are. And you're not going to document it along the way. You're going to be so in it. And then when you land and you get off the jet, they're going to see a person. And they're not going to have to ask, what do you know or what are you doing? They're going to feel from you that person just went on a ride that asked them to dance with death. That person just went on a ride that mended their soul. That person just went somewhere that I will never know, but I trust it because the way I'm feeling in their presence, I know they've been somewhere. And they didn't document it, but it's standing right in front of me. And they didn't teach it. They just are it. And a lot of the lessons that come to you are going to be on that ride. And to me, that's how we truly amplify our companies. That's how we truly create legacies. That's how we deepen the soul of our business is when we trust to take the ride and leave our phone at home 
and leave our phone on the ground and say, God, take me. Put me on the private jet. Don't tell anybody where I'm going. I don't need to track it along the way. I just want to learn it. I want it to be in me forever. I want it to be something that I never forget. And I don't need to give it away. I don't need to turn it into a teaching or a method. It's just becoming part of who I am. It's now a part of my leadership. It's a part of my life. It's a part of my eyes. It's a part of the way that I see the world and the way that I love and the way that I receive people in my presence. That's true leadership. And that takes deep trust and a secure connection with yourself. That's what truly breeds confidence. And nobody could ever teach you that. That's that 30% that you're going to go on with God. No course is going to be able to teach you that type of confidence. And I get asked all the time how, and I'm very transparent. I can't teach you my natural way because I can't tell you what private jets you're supposed to ride undiscovered in your soul. That's you and you. That's your ride. And when you finally have the courage to take it and unplug from that template of I need to turn everything into a meaning for my business, it adds to your leadership in the most powerful way. The second ride you're going to take is a public flight that's sold out. And if you're lucky, you'll get an aisle seat. So if you have to use the bathroom a lot like me, you can just get up and really easily do your thing. But that public flight is going to have a bunch of people on it. And you're going to document the flight along the way. You're going to document the ride. You're going to document the lessons. You're going to take people along for the ride. You're gonna, they're going to be able to see you. They're going to be right there, front row and center. And you're going to have the courage to show them, you know, this is something I want you guys to see in real time. Come with me. And then with those rides, you're going to land together. The thing is discerning between the two. When is God asking you to take the courage to get on the private jet untracked, untethered? And when is God saying, do it in front of your people, do it with your people? You have to know the difference. You cannot let Instagram decide that. You can't let the other coaches decide that. You can't let content creation patterns decide that. You have to be connected to your life and understand that your soul is so much bigger than your business, that not everything's a lesson that's meant to be channeled back into your business. Some stuff is just for your beating heart. Some stuff is just for your inner child. Some stuff is just for you. And the only reason why I know this is because I've been moving through it. And I felt the call to share it with y'all. Of There's some people who are who just need to receive the lesson on their own and not have it be given to anyone. But there's this pressure to turn everything into something. To turn everything into something breathtaking and perfect and beautiful and wise. And at some point, that shit gets so tiring. It gets exhausting. That's not art. That's not artistry. That's performance. That's fake. That's not real. So in the age of innovation, this is a big discernment that we're going to have to really look at. Because our business can't live under that much pressure. Your human needs to sometimes just be and rest and not have the pressure of turning that into something legendary. And then for each of you, once you do that, ironically... There's some legendary things that reveal themselves, but they feel clean. They come out effortless. They come out, they come through you. They come from you. It's this, it's this force that just pulses out. It's not something that you have to, to fabricate or make happen. It's just this thing. It's like, of course. And those are the offers that are truly going to build the business model that honors the soul. And then you begin to sell in a ceremonial way that creates an experience, an unforgettable experience. And then this all becomes part of your brand. It's not something that you have to explain to people. It's just naturally expressed. And this is true freedom. So I want to read a a poem that I wrote about this concept. And some of you might have watched the reel that I posted when I decided to come back online. 
and I, I wrote this as a poem because it came through like spoken word and this is my way of innovating is teaching through spoken word, teaching through poetry versus just having it be, you know, you sitting down in a master class. I think that there's power in getting a message through a unique way. So as I read this to you, just notice what it does to the bones of your body. Notice what it does to the way that you breathe. And my, my wish and my prayer is that it shows you that you have the opportunity to create more freedom in your business and that it's safe to rebuild your business model to have a deeper connection with who you really are and what you want to bring to this space. So I'm going to read this and then afterwards I have a really amazing opportunity for y'all to work with me in innovating your next offer and building a business model that actually speaks from the soul of your company. And this is going to be an offer that you're going to be like, wait, what? It, this is something that I'm truly so excited to bring to you. It's going to be a, a done with you experience in a group setting. And I'm going to share that after I read this to you. And if you're driving, you can just listen. If you are walking, just again, receive these words and notice what they open up for you. Consistency for me looks like knowing that I'll always come back. You trust that even though you can't see me, I never left the room. Consistency for me looks like allowing my energetic signature to explode into a thousand suns so that when my physical human needs to rest and my desire to be alone and flails, the world still knows my name, the industry still feels my pulse, and the people still feel my heart. Consistency for me looks like being okay with you knowing that I'm gone. They'll wait for you, I hear God say, because you trust my return, and so do I. Consistency for me looks like falling deeply in love with the process so that perfection bows at my feet and the grip of needing to people please has no hold over me. Consistency for me looks like remembering I don't need to be something for this industry. Consistency for me looks like letting my voice reach into you like an echo. My messages become a sound wave. Reflecting off the waters of your body, I may be gone, but my words begin to repeat back to you again and again and again as if I never left. I let my impact become invisible, no longer needing to be seen, not visible for your physical eye, yet indistinguishable in your mind an omnipresence that extends into every home, every corner, every soul who's meant to exchange with me in this life. You remember me, you think of me, you wonder where I am, and I remember you, I think of you every day, I wonder how your heart is. But I crawled the edges of innovation for you, with you I die again and again to the work, sharpening the muscles of my craft, so there is none of me and all of God, so that when I decide to leave, God remains and you feel it. I know you do. This is freedom. The freedom I started my business for in the first place. In the moments between, I wait for the call to come on. I don't move a second sooner, and as if no time has passed, we're together again, just like that. It's us for the world. <sighs> to me, that's consistency. It is trusting myself to come back not posting every day or needing to be something for this industry, but letting my work be so connected to something bigger that if I decide to rest or take time away, that God still leads through it. But if I create offers and work that is not connected to God, that is not connected to the true mission, then that can never happen. I'll always have to play the part. I'll always have to perform. I'll always have to do the thing. And no matter how much money you make doing that, millions, it's never going to feel free. 
it'll never taste like freedom. It'll never taste like your mission. So my invitation for you is to join me in a workshop. I decided to create a workshop for this exact thing. It's called Innovate. It's an offer creation workshop. And it's a done with you workshop where we're gonna actually be together for three hours. There's gonna be some breaks in between. We're gonna really bust out our notebooks. We're gonna bust out our pens. We're gonna open up our minds. We're gonna open up our bodies to really access what is the offer that I wanna present but not just present, but innovate in the process. And how can I create some micro brands for my offers that build out a business model that truly speaks on behalf of me so that when I'm not there, there's a whole circulation of wisdom or creation or connection that can then be for the people. How can I separate just a little bit my life from needing to be something for this industry? So that when God says, get on the private fucking jet and go on the journey, I'm not afraid to put the thing down. Some of y'all are gripping to your business and the money, like, but I can't. I got to do this first before I can take the ride, God. And God's like, if you take the ride, then it's going to be the thing that, that lands you in the confidence and the embodiment for the next thing, but you won't take the ride because you don't think you can walk anywhere besides right here. I have to show up. You're like a soldier. I have to post. I have to do this. I have to, and we're all hypnotized by this fucking matrix, by this, like we're slaves. And we have to snap out of it. And it might mean slowing down it might mean the numbers start to change in your company it might mean that things get shifted and they will but i promise you that it's gonna come back and in a way that feels so much more you the money that i make today is so much cleaner so much more free and we all have to go through that lesson we all have to go through that process we all have to take that that step So wherever you are, it's perfect. It's actually the perfect time. There is no wrong. This is just part of the ride. Part of the ride is rejection and getting lost and freaking out and not knowing and then knowing. Part of the ride is trusting yourself and then having to reinvigorate that trust. It's it's a continuous thing. But when we make ourselves wrong, we automatically devalue ourselves we rip our sense of belonging from us and without that sense of belonging without that depth of value you will never have the confidence to sell and actually bring your work to the world and at the end of the day what do i always say the end of the day it's god's work it's god's work through you So what would it look like if you let that be the main template that you created from? And what if you plugged all the way into that? What if you found a sense of safety in that? So Innovate is the workshop that we're gonna be riding with this month. If you're in the House of We Academy, this is already included. If you're in One Year, One Yes, this is already included. If you're not in either of those offers and you wanna buy this a la carte, it's currently $147. It's going to be a three-hour done with you workshop where we go through creating an offer together and you're going to be able to use that process for your other offers. And then we're also going to look at your bigger business model and see how you can create one that honors the soul of your business. And deeper than that, we get to understand what is the soul of your business. The soul of your business is not Instagram. It's not social media. It's not anything on this physical app. It's something so much deeper. And when you're connected to it, you can be a steward of the work that's meant to come through that soul and a steward of the money that is meant to come through that soul. And that's when business becomes free. That's when your pioneership liberates you. It's the most exciting freaking thing in the world to know that this is something that I innovated, that nobody can take it away because I innovated it. And even if somebody copied it, it's okay because you feel the power of it. It's never, it's, you can't duplicate it. 
So that's the energy that I want to invite you in if you're at that stage of business and you're ready to take that ride and you're ready to see what's possible in that space. I'm gonna drop the link here and you'll also find it in my bio. So you'll be able to go after this live into my bio and the link will be there for you to sign up. We're gonna be hosting this on August 18th at 2 p.m. Pacific. If you cannot attend live, you're gonna get a replay right after. So even if you can't attend live, I would recommend still purchasing it now because on the day of the masterclass, the price is gonna go up to 247. So you can save $100 between now and Thursday. And then as soon as we host it, it's gonna go up and then you can buy the recording for 247. So I would love, love, love if you joined us live. I would love to meet you in this space and be in, I see this as a ceremony of what wants to come through your business and be in an honest conversation about what offers you're meant to bring to the marketplace. And this is gonna be a blend of a, a real business conversation of what does it mean to have value in the marketplace? What does your community actually find valuable? And what's meant to just be for you? This just came through and I'm gonna say this because I feel it's a breakthrough for someone. A lot of times I've noticed if your offer is not selling, something you can look at is, was this meant for me? Was it valuable for me? Like, was it that private jet ride that I was meant to take with God? Or was it meant to be turned into a course or a masterclass? It was valuable for me, but is it valuable for them? So some people are selling stuff that's not valuable for their people. It was supposed to just be for them, but they wanted to monetize it. But they didn't discern between the two of what's mine for me to embody and then articulate out for just me. And what's actual value for the people I'm meant to exchange and serve with. More often than not, there's a huge difference between the two. And our leadership is calling for us to understand and discern between those two things so that you can feel confident in what you're bringing and you can also feel safe having your own ride and your own evolution as a leader and a human, as a person on this planet who's also just growing and has their own soul lessons that they came here to play and dance with. This is where we create true liberation in business. This is where we free the entrepreneurial soul. This is where we bring the artists back online. This is where we create true art that is not a performance, but is an expression of God. So if you're in, I would love to have you. This was an amazing, amazing morning together where we got to jam. We went to so many different places that I'm just like so grateful for our time together. I'm going to save this live. It'll be on IGTV. You can find the link to innovate in my bio. I'm also going to pop it in my story. So come play. It's 147. It's three hours. You'll get the recording lifetime access. This is going to be a gift and such a powerful experience. If you have any questions, DM me. Me or my team will be there to answer them for you. And until next time, I will see you soon. Bye, everyone.